It's the summer of 1799 in Staffordshire, and one of Lisbeth Bede's sons has marriage on his mind. White lace. White lace and some kind of blossom. Orange blossom. I've never seen it. It's lovely. Mm. Orange blossom, then. Mm. Lovely and simple. I think that's best for a wedding day, don't you? Maybe those earrings you bought. I know they're gold and there's pearls in them and... What was it? Garnet. Garnet. But they're still quite simple. Quite... Tasteful? Better than that. Elegant. Mm. That's it. Mm. I could fall asleep like this. Yes, we should move. You'll be looked for at the farm. Not a minute yet. Just a minute. All right. A minute, then. Mm. For dinner, it'll be brocaded silk and feathers in my hair. A dress that sweeps the ground. I love the sound that makes. Hattie. Mm -hmm. You know I have to go away. Where to? To Windsor. I told you to join my regiment. But that's not for weeks yet. A few weeks, and I'll be away a long time. You'll be back before Christmas. Well, I hope so. But who knows what orders may come up? A soldier's duty. Yes. And gentlemen of their duties, too. But you can't do what you really want while your grandfather's... Sorry. It's all right. It's true. How old is your grandfather? Eighty-three. Usually women live as long as that. I sometimes think he'll outlive us all. Do you know Mr James? Who? Mr James, a doctor's assistant. He married the doctor's niece. No, no, I don't think I know him. They got married in secret. By the time their families found out, it was too late to be angry. You will write to me when you go to Windsor. Yes. Promise. I promise. Dear Brother Seth, I would not have you think... Brother Seth. And mind the night she called me sister. Aye, Mother. But I had to think of her as my daughter. Diana only wanted you to know how she cared for you. Aye. On you go, Seth. She's a good lass for a methody. I would not have you think me slow to answer your letter, but I had not enough money by me to pay the carriage for now. Please tell your mother I often bear her in my thoughts at evening time, when I'm sitting in the dim light, as I did with her. She writes well for a woman. Mother. What? On you go, Seth. And I rejoice in your joy at the good prospects that lie before your brother. The honour you bear him is nothing but meat, for God has given him great gifts. And so will Captain Donnithorne. Dinah means great gifts and abilities, Mother. Adam's gift for the woodworking. I know that. That was just jesting. Now get on. It's a strange thing, a letter. Strange? From someone you know, someone you've seen. I can't tell you what I'd think of these words if I'd never met Dinah. But now, when it seems I can see her and hear her speaking... And... Uh, sorry, Seth. <laughs> I think often, too, of our dear friends at the Hall Farm. I hope they are well. I, myself, am greatly strengthened. I have constant work at the mill and often walk to other villagers to speak. But I felt little weariness. I have felt much sorrow. Who could not? Seeing the hardship and the blindness and the sin in the world. But sorrow is a part of love. If any man love me, let him take up my cross. I've heard preachers enlarge on that verse, as if the cross were the persecution we might bring on ourselves by following Jesus. But that seems a narrow thought to me. The true cross he bore was the sin and sorrow of this world. That was what lay heavy on his heart. And this is the cross we must bear with him if we'd have any part in divine love. <laughs> he loves you, Eddie Sorrow. You know he does. It's real. As real as this gold and garnet and pearl. Look at you. A lady. A lady to ride in the coach. <laughs> Why not? Who in Aeslop deserves more? Who else would look so right? 
Will you look down from your coach as you ride away? Down on the likes of Mr Craig and Adam Bede and Luke Britton. Will you be wearing these earrings then? Yes. Let other folks see them, everyone. Not just him and me and you in the glass. Can you imagine Dinah Morris wearing earrings like these? My cousin in a methody cap. Do I think of her? No. She hasn't the ears or the neck for these. Sometimes, when I'm working in the mill, or even speaking the gospel, my thoughts are carried to them, to Hetty and to my aunt and uncle. Maybe because they're all I have left in family. But I find I dread they may be in some need or trouble. This is quite dark to me yet. I pray for understanding. Farewell, dear brother. We shall see each other again, I trust. Your faithful sister and fellow worker in Christ, Dinah Morris. Greet your mother for me with a kiss. She thought of me again at the end. So she did, Mother. I wonder why she fears some trouble at the old farm. Well, you've been there often of late. Too often, maybe. Did it all seem well to you? Aye, the boys have gone on grand. And Hetty? And that's what I'm afraid of. Some trouble from the farm moving in here. Arthur, my boy. Good morning. Good morning, Owen. You're just in time. Eggs and ham and coffee. Coffee, certainly. Oh, this is just like old days. You haven't taken breakfast with me for a long time. It was a tempting morning for a ride. And then while I was out, I recalled those breakfasts we used to share. <laughs> Good time for talking. And you've something particular to say? Well, always nothing much. Hardly anything at all, really. Oh, I love this time of day. No dust settled on my mind yet. <laughs> a good book by me. What's this? Aeschylus? <laughs> this time in the morning? <laughs> I wish you'd stuck more to your books, you rascal. I should have had better hopes of conversation then. But I suppose a knowledge of the classics is not such a pressing want to a country gentleman. No, he'd be better with a knowledge of manures. Ah. Is it that your future as a landlord doesn't entice you? Not at all. I'm longing to begin that life. Some of the estate's in a dismal condition. I'm impatient to begin improvements, to be useful. And to ride about, knowing all your tenants by name, and delighting in seeing them touch their hats to you. Is that wrong? Oh, perfectly proper. But don't set your heart too strongly on the affection of your tenants, Arthur. Not if you're so intent on improving them. Some neighbourhoods are up in arms, you know, over such improvements as enclosure. Get clear in your mind which is most dear to you, popularity or usefulness else you may miss both. Mm. Well, I think I know where those landlords went wrong. Do you indeed? Yes. They were too harsh in their manners. The first thing you have to do is make yourself agreeable to your people. There's not a lot you can't prevail on them to do with a bit of kindness. And in that quality, you're rich. But I can't spend it to any effect. I am convinced that if I had the power to make the tenants fair allowances and have their buildings attended to and such like, I could persuade them to farm on a better plan, stupid as some of them are. But my grandfather allows me no power at all, and he won't as long as he lives. You're not wishing that won't be too long, I hope? No. But it leaves me... What? I don't know. Adrift? This can seem a dull, confounded place when there's nothing to occupy me. It leaves me... prey to impulse. Impulse? Yes, impulse. I see. Arthur, are you here to see me as your minister, magistrate, or your friend? Well, friend, of course. I've no need of the other two. There's nothing... Serious? Not even significant. A trifle, really. An impulse to trifle? Perhaps. But I struggle against it. It is vexatious, you know. After all our reflections and determinations, our, our resolutions, we can still be ruled by our moods, our impulses. Vexatious. My mother and I have little discussions about you sometimes. Yeah. And she says she'll make no prophecy about you until she sees the woman you marry. She thinks your wife will rule you as the moon rules the tides. Wife? I've no plan to make anyone my wife, let alone... Ah. Let alone a dairymaid, perhaps. One whose best hope might be to learn sewing and lace mending from your Mrs. Pomfret and one day become a lady's maid. Owen. We are talking about a trifle here. A flirtation, no lower kind of folly. Owen, there is nothing low in this. I swear to you. 
To flirt with a pretty girl of your own station, Arthur, that's all very fine. That's understood on both sides to be no more than a game. Or if it does go beyond that, there's no obstacle to marriage. Which brings to mind something I read in Aeschylus only last night from the Prometheus. Oh, there is Never it. mind Aeschylus, Owen. We're not in a Greek tragedy. Very well. But think about this. You say you want to earn the respect and the goodwill of your tenants. I'm determined on that. Then let me take as examples these two, Martin and Rachel Poyser. They're good examples, Arthur. They're excellent people. I know they are. To such as the Poysers, their good name is as precious as if they had the noblest blood in the land in their veins. And never be too sure how far off you are from tragedy. The reflections you spoke of and the resolution, they're part of your nature and it's a good nature. But the moods and impulses are your nature too. And our deeds arise from our nature. All deeds have consequences. Consequences are without pity. Are you going to bring in Nemesis now? Seems appropriate. Seems far too significant. I'll uh, leave you to your Aeschylus. You're to join your regiment soon. Yes, at Windsor. I think that's a good thing. Don't you? It's so good to see you. But why are you here now? I thought I'd meet you on your way to Mrs. Pomfret. And what? Just have a quick word. Mm -hmm. And a quick kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you been drinking? No. Well, only wine. I always have a glass in the... May have had a little more than usual. Only a little. It's all right. Will we have a drop of brandy in the hermitage later? No. No, I, I don't think we should. Not tonight. We... We have to be more careful. I never have more than the tiniest sip. I know. I have to go. The sooner I'm there, the earlier I can leave and be back with you. Hetty, we must talk. Talk? Your aunt and uncle, they're excellent people. Oh, of course they are. What is it? Not among them that are mighty in pride. They're proud in their way. What is it, Arthur? It's Aeschylus. I've been reading Aeschylus. <laughs> then you can read some to me later and we'll talk. Oh, dear Lord, Hetty, you are so... Later! As soon as I can. Not among them that are mighty in pride should marriage be desired by them who toil with their hands to marry one's own degrees. Oh, damn Aeschylus. Damn Owen. This isn't the first time. What? Adam? Is it? What are you doing? Not the first time at all. Where did you come from? Back there. Back there inspecting your trees, as you requested, for quality, for their health. And it's your quality, I see. Adam, you should go. No, I'll stand here. I'll stand here and you'll fight me. Fight you? Aye, fight me. Don't be ridiculous, Adam. Do you want provoking? A coward that wants provoking? Adam? A coward! A coward and a scoundrel! Fight me! Outright scoundrel, fight me! Come in. Close the door. God, Adam, I thought you were going to kill me. My anger took me over. I thought myself I... Dangerous thing, your anger. Aye. I think I may have passed out for a moment when I hit the ground. You fought back well enough before that, sir. Praise indeed. And would you unleash that anger to defend all the maidens in Hayslop? Adam, you'll find brandy on that shelf there and two glasses. For yourself, too. Has Hetty been here? Have some brandy, Adam, and sit down. Has she been here? No. Now have a drink and sit down. I may have cracked a rib here. That wasn't the first time you kissed her. I could see that. Are you in love with Hetty Sorrel? I have been for two years. Dear God. I've known for two years I wanted Hetty as my wife. I didn't know. I swear to you, Adam, I did not know. I thought you were going to marry the Burge girl, your employer's daughter. I imagine a lot of folk have Mary and I paired off in their minds. It was never in my mind. But Hetty... I'm, I'm sorry, Adam, but it does come as a... Well, I know it's a match might puzzle some people. But I looked at her once in church and I knew. 
Simple as that. I knew. And since then, you've never wavered because you don't. Does she know? She knows. And you've asked her to marry you? You haven't. Not yet. Can she still be my wife? What kind of question? Adam, listen. We all like to flirt, do we not, with a pretty girl. It's a natural impulse. And she likes to be flirted with. That's natural, too. Things don't lie level between you and Hetty. No. I'm a gentleman and she's my tenant's niece. And knowing that, she won't deceive herself. It's not her deceiving I'm concerned with. Adam, I know we've been friends for a long time. I'm not forgetting what's due to you as gentlemen. But in this thing, we're man and man. I never said a dishonest word to Hetty, nor a deceiving one, not knowingly. And if she'd even hinted at how you feel about her, I wouldn't have said as much as I have. As much as you have? Well, I'm not going to repeat my flirtation for you. That's too much. Too humiliating. Ah, now, come on now. Shake my hand. Oh, I don't like to say not to Oh, that. for heaven's sake, man. I can't shake hands till I know what we both mean by it. Well, I mean I've done no more than flirt with a girl, stolen an innocent kiss or two. But didn't you see that if it got out how you'd been behaving with her, if it got to her family... No one knew. I know. I saw. Right. You're right. And what I mean by my offer to shake your hand, an offer I intend to make only once more, is that I'll put all this right, hmm? I'll clear up with Hetty any misunderstanding she might have got into her head, and then I'm off to Windsor, to my regiment. I was due to go there soon anyway. I'll go sooner. No, sir. What? That won't do. Won't do? Listen, Adam, I think I know what's needful in this matter. I'll take what measures I think proper. No. Don't overstep now. You won't see her again. I don't want to see her. I... Do you know what I really want? I want to go home. I want to go home and have a deep, long, hot bath with a few more of these. And then, as soon as I can mount a horse again, I want to ride off to Windsor and not see you again for several months. Oh, that sounds fine. But you want Hetty undeceived, if she has been deceived. Aye, she has to be. She has to know you meant no more than flirtation. And if I simply go, wouldn't she understand then? If I say nothing and simply go away... Could you do that? No, that wouldn't be right. Good. I want to think the best of you, sir. You're overstepping again. Am I? If I am, I have to, and I beg your pardon. But I don't think I am. When we were boys... Yes? I know that even then, you were the son of a gentleman, and I was the, the son... son of a master craftsman. Aye, so I, I was. still hear you say it. I'm Thias Bede's lad. As if all the world knew and admired your father. All my world did. I was proud to have you as a friend. Proud to be carried on those shoulders of yours. And I mind the time you kicked over old Davy's pitcher of broth for no reason. Oh, God, yes. No reason at all, just an impulse to kick. I'd no idea it was the man's only supper. But when you did find out, you gave him your pencil case and a silver hafted knife. I've always known you wanted to do right. Yes. Well, he took them, but when I got home, they were both in my room waiting for me. But you didn't know they would be. Did you? Aye, I did. When I offered you the job of managing my woods, Adam, I wanted... It was more than for the estate. It was because I wanted something of that friendship again. I still do. Something of that trust between us. Well, maybe. But that's the thing. You're not going away forever. And if you leave now, leave Hetty with a false notion in her mind. Well? But you don't have to see her. It can all be made good in a letter. You write it, and I'll see she gets it with no one else knowing. It can all be made good. She has to know you don't love her. Never have. Isn't that right? Yes, he does. I know he does. I should know better than you. And I love him. I know that, Hetty. I saw you. Saw me? Last night, in the woods. What? On the path to the orla. I saw you and him. You saw us? And I know he's made you love him. He didn't mean to, but he has. Because I can't believe you'd let him kiss you like that if you didn't love him. Yes, he kisses me. And gives me things, earrings, gold and garnet and pearls. I can show you them. Real gold. Real love, Adam Bede. Marrying love. He's a gentleman, Hetty. 
He could never marry you. Yes, he could. We could marry in secret like Mr James and the doctor's niece. By the time anybody knows, what could his grandfather do? What could Aunt Poyser do? The captain's no doctor's assistant. He's to be landlord of this estate for long. And what'll that make me? What it's made you now is his plaything. How dare you? Hetty, he's been trifling with you. He meant no real harm, but that's what it's been. No! You're so young, Hetty. You haven't seen much of what goes on in the world. Have I not? Have I not indeed? And how much of the world have you seen? Enough to know that if anyone else but me had been on that path last night, you'd have lost your character. <sighs> What's my character to you? Or is? Maybe you called him a friend when you were little, but... I have I... a letter from him. A letter for you. He's gone off early to Windsor and he left it with me before he went. It'll tell you what I just have. The truth. That he never has... Here. You don't have to read it now. Keep it till you're on your own. No. I'll read it now. Dearest Hetty, when I said that I loved you, I spoke the truth. I loved you then, and I love you now, truly. But I should have resisted that love. You know so little of the world in which I must always live, and in which we could never live together. If I were to marry you, I should only be adding to any wrong I've already done, and your grief in the end would be deeper. For myself, it would be to offend against my duties elsewhere, to my family, the estate, my regiment. And since we cannot marry, we must part. Hetty, the fault has been all mine. I have been unable to resist the longing to be near you. And I wish you could be angry, not sorrowful. Be angry with me, my love. And then later, try to forgive. And know that if ever any trouble comes to you, I'll do all in my power to help you. Try to forgive. And to forget. Forget as much as you can. Except that I shall always be, as long as I live. Your affectionate friend, Arthur. Does he tell the truth? Yes. I'm sorry, Hetty. He's a good man, but he has his weaknesses, like us all. Yes. Do you think you might... What? You could write to Dinah. Dinah? Ask if she might come and be with you for a while. I've no need of Dinah. I've no need of preaching. I'll go inside now. Hetty, wait. You have to know. You've done nothing wrong, not knowingly. And you're the same as ever to me. And I'm still the foreman at Burgess. What I mean is... Uh, what I mean is... What do you mean? I may be partner there someday. Who knows where it might lead? Maybe someday I'll build a bridge, or a factory, or a town hall. A town hall? Why not? Who knows? I do know I could make a wife comfortable. I can afford to do that at least. And I'd want to marry. Or I would unless... Unless you won't have me. I'd only want to marry you. I'm going inside now. What maggot's this you've got in your head now? It's no maggot, Aunt. A lady's maid? Yes. I think I'd like it better than farm work. Aye, because you think there'd be no more to it than wearing finer clothes than you were born to. No. I like the work, the needlework and the lace mending. And Mrs Pomfret says I'm good at it. She's even said she'll help me find a situation. Aye, but Hetty, lass, it wouldn't be half as good for your health, shut indoors all year. I'll get good wages. Wages? When this family's at their own bread and cheese as far back as anybody minds? Your aunt's right, Hetty. I wouldn't like to see you take a wage. A move like that's for them as has got no home. Aye, not them as wants to get rid of home. I was glad to have Mrs Pomfret teach you them skills. It's good to know how to turn your hand to different things in case they become a necessity. But they haven't, have they? This is what comes of taking tea and jam with them servants at the hall. And your aunt would be sorry to part with you, wouldn't you, Rachel? 
And you've got as good a chance as anybody in the county of getting a solid, sober husband. Someone better than one of them valets or grooms who are neither common man nor gentlefolk. Is that what you want? We could do better for you than that, Etty. You think that would be a finer life than being with them that are kin to you? Well, she's got her mouth buttoned up face on. Etty? Like a cherry with hard stone in it. A chicken from every brood. What's that? I'll take my one chicken from every brood and be glad I've got it. I'll stay with my own kin with the chickens and the cows and the butter and cheese. It's all this last. I'll never go to the yard again. I'll stay here. No tea and jam, no sips of brandy. Brandy? No white lace or orange blossom. I don't even know what orange blossom looks like. And why should I? I know so little of the world. I'll never ride in a coach or go for dinner in brocaded silk. I'll forget what a dress like that even sounds like when it sweeps the ground. Aye, I'll forget. Forgive and forget. Forget as much as I can. And I'll always be, as long as I live, here, with my own kin, my own kind, and marry Adam Bede. I'm the same as ever to him, and he can afford me. I'll marry Adam Bede. Fifteenth of March, Mrs. Bede. Less than a fortnight away. Aye. Six months courtship. Is that long enough, do you think, Mr. Irwin? Well, there are differing opinions as to that. It seemed long enough for Adam, Mother. And Hetty, too. She's had a new cottage to look forward to, and all the fittings Adam's done for her, which will be the finest of work. We can see why she'd be impatient. I'm sure Adam has the place in prime condition for his bride. Aye. And what'll be my condition? When he's gone away with her. Oh, he's hardly what you'd call gone away, Mother. Less than half a mile. It's the other side of the village. There isn't room here for all of us. Mm, I wonder if there'll be room for my feet under a table. Of course there will. Which my son made for her. Uh, is Adam about, Seth? Uh, no, he isn't, Mr Irwin. He's gone to Snowfield. Snowfield? Where Miss Morris lives? Aye. Hetty had gone there to spend some time with her cousin. Adam's gone to fetch her back. Uh, maybe bring Dinah with them. Oh, and that would be a blessing. There'll always be room for that one in this house. Have you met Dinah, sir? Yes, I have. You know, she's Methody, like Seth here. Yes. And a preacher. But for all that, any mother would be proud to have that one as a daughter. <laughs> uh, when will Adam be back? Oh, we expected him today. Tomorrow at the latest, I should think. Fine. Will I say a prayer with you before I go, Mrs Bede? If you please, Mr Irwin. We can pray that Adam brings Dinah back with him. It's true enough, Adam's still poorish. Yeah, but not for long. There's money in that lad's mind. As sure as there's money in a own field. <laughs> and, of course, me and Rachel are helping with some bits and pieces to get them started. Aye. And pillar feathers and linen. I never sell a fowl that isn't plucked first. And that wheel there's spinning every day of the week. Adam fixed the wheel himself. He's a fine young man, Adam. <laughs> that he is. I doubt if you'll ever marry a finer-looking couple, Mr Irwin. <laughs> you may well be right, Mr Poyser. And Hetty's expected back by tomorrow, is she? Oh, as a, as a matter of fact, she's been expected a few days now. Really? Aye. That's why Adam's gone to fetch her. How long has she been gone? Over a fortnight. And only a fortnight till the wedding. Well, I hope she hasn't been taken poorly. Oh, no, no, no. I think it's more likely she's had to wait till Dinah's free to come back with her. We thought it would be good for Dinah to be here with Rachel for a while. Oh, for the wedding, like. No, I doubt she'll come. Not unless Hetty's persuaded her the folks here are more miserable than in Snowfield. Dinah will go where the misery is deepest. You know what these methodies are like, Mr Irwin. Yes. Well, I'm sure you're right, Mr Poyser. Dinah has her millwork and her society. Hetty will have had to wait till Dinah can get free. Or maybe she's simply been enjoying her cousin's company. That'd be a change. Well, she has changed, Rachel. You have to admit she can be closer tempered than we thought. Quite grave and steady. I'm too grave, maybe. I've seen times I couldn't draw a word from her with cart ropes. And she seems to think less about her dress. That is a change. Less childlike, you might say. As we'd expect, eh? Since she's soon to be fully a woman. Aye. 
and approaching it all quite steady and grave. Ah, but with the sweetest smile whenever Adam appears. Aye. It's a new smile, that. tea and some bread. Then I have to go. Go where? Sit down. I'll just have a bite. Sit down, Adam. God have mercy on us, brother. You look like father sitting there. Father? Aye. Pale, unwashed, dead eyes. But you don't come home in the morning drunk. So tell. Is it a death? No. No, she's not dead. I don't really know what... Is Mother awake? I doubt it. It's not five yet. Are you just in? Hi. From Snowfield? Hi. And from Stoniton. Well, why there? That's the last place I know she went. After that... Tell me it all. It was a grand morning. Sunday, when you left it? Hi. A grand morning. Cold and fresh, a bit of frost on the edges yet. And it was like I could hear her on ahead of me somewhere, like music drawing me on. She'd been softer towards me this last month or two. Aye, you told me so. Kinder than she's ever been. And I was thinking how the roads need improving. The roads? Aye, there's a lot of repairing needing done and widening. And if each gentleman set to making those improvements in his own district, well, the whole country would... I used to think he might listen to ideas like that. Who, Adam? When I got near a snowfield, you've been there. Well, it's bleak. No woodland, pastures are meagre. And all those grey stone walls, the houses the same, dismal. All that broken land where the mines used to be. I thought, well, if Dinah wants to live in a country that needs comfort, this is the place. She must look like an angel down there. So I got to the town, the house where Dinah lodges. But she wasn't there. She was in Leeds. Well, she'd be there in society work. Aye, the old woman told me. She remembered you. Well, Mrs Cranage. Aye. She sends her respects. Said Dinah had been in Leeds for a fortnight. A fortnight? Well, she must have found lodgings for Hetty there. No. Hetty had never been as far as Snowfield. The old woman hadn't seen her, had never heard of her. So where did she go? She went to Oakbourne first. Well, aye. Well, you saw her in the coach for there yourself. And from there she was to take the coach to Snowfield. <laughs> but she didn't. I asked in Oakbourne. She took the Stoniton coach, so I went there. I found the coachman who'd taken her. You remembered her. Said he'd taught her a joke, but she didn't laugh. But where she'd gone, he'd no idea. I went to the inn, went to the first toll gate on every road out. Nothing. But where would she go? And why? Because she didn't love me, Seth. Adam. It's the truth. And as the wedding got close... Where could she go? I have a journey to make, Seth. Where? I can't tell you. I'm sorry, lad, but I can't. You must tell Mother I've gone on business and tell anyone else that asks the same. You can't go now. You haven't eaten yet. I've taken some money out of the tin box. If anything happens, the rest is yours. Adam. I'm going to do nothing but what's my duty, Seth. Take care of mother. I knew she'd bring trouble. Mother, I didn't hear you get up. To Adam and to my house. Mother, sit down. And I want Dinah. You must fetch Dinah. I thought there were too much sadness in that smile of hers. It's not sadness can have taken her away. No, more than that. She must have mistaken her feelings for me. Then she didn't deserve you, Adam. And with the wedding getting close. Aye, and everything got ready. Pillow, feathers and linen and all. Oh, they won't go to waste. 
Maybe she's gone to be a lady's maid. Mind she got that in her head six months ago. She'll need a situation to go to. Aye. So she may come back. If she's gone looking for a place, does it get one? Aye. She may, Adam. And I'd hope you wouldn't look too harshly on her. There's a time for harshness, lad, but this wouldn't be it. We won't turn our backs on her. Isn't that right, Poyser? As you say, Rachel. As I say. Not as anyone else in this village says. Whatever they say, in church or alehouse, we won't turn our backs on her. So you've told your brother and her aunt and uncle? Aye, sir. But I haven't told all I know. What more do you know? I'll tell you, sir, as you're the gentleman I look up to most of anybody. If something happens, here or where I'm going, you'll know where I am. There's someone else, you see, Mr. Irwin. Someone else? Someone else concerned in her going off. Another man besides me. Sit down, madam. Thank you, sir. Where do you plan to go? Windsor. Windsor. To find Captain Donithorn. And to find Hetty. I'm near certain she's... His name came quick to you, sir. Who else would you be seeking in Windsor? But you won't find him there. Where is he, then? In Ireland. Ireland? His regiment was sent there a fortnight ago. I don't know if I have the money to get that far. Maybe, Mr. Irwin, you'd <laughs> see you your... You won't need to go to Ireland, Adam. Now, tell me what else you know. Oh, I thought of him as a friend, Mr. Irwin, though he's a gentleman. I have done since we were lads. And I was glad and proud that I was going to be working close with him. And you think Arthur has done something unworthy of your pride in him? I know he has. He's deceived me. Deceived you? Would she set off to find him on her own? I mean, uncalled for. I can't see that, sir. He must have written to her, sent directions and maybe money. And that means he wanted her with him. That means he deceived me. He lied to me. Why are you so sure that Arthur is the man? I saw them. More than six months ago now. I saw them on the path through the woods, the path to the hall. Saw them together. And you confronted them? I confronted him. He's got a place set up there, a summer house place, all set up with carpets and brandy. He told me she was never there, but now I think he lied about that too. It was more than flirting. Our deeds arise from our nature. All deeds have consequences. Consequences are without pity. Mr Irwin, do you know something of this? Arthur came to me, Adam, before you witnessed what you did. And he told you? No, but I think he wanted to, wanted to confess. But I didn't press him. If I had... Oh, he'll confess to me. I'll see he does this time. If I can find him, find no, them. No, Adam. I can't give in, sir. Not so long as there's an ounce of hope. I know that, and you must hold to it. I have some money. If you lend me just a little more, I can get to Ireland. Hetty's not in Ireland, Adam. She's not in Windsor, either. You know where she is? Yes. I had a letter this morning, just half an hour ago. A letter from Hetty? No. You must bear this, Adam, while there's an ounce of hope. The letter was from Stoniton, from the magistrate there. A magistrate? Yes. Hetty is in prison. She's been arrested. I was in Stoniton. A child was found. A dead child. What child? Hetty's own. She's been accused of the murder of her own child. All I've called sorrow in my life, none of it, none of it would leave a bruise not next to this. Men are born to suffer, women too. We all know that. We're told it in church, in the Bible. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth. been a crime it's his 
effect on hers. He taught her to deceive and he lied to me. Maybe he was lying even all those years ago, when he was just a lad and kicked over old Davy's broth. He gave his pencil case and his knife to make up for it, said he didn't know old David would take them just to give them back, that they'd be waiting in his room when he got home. But maybe he did know. Adam? Maybe he knew all along. Who did? Knew what? I think he was lying even then. You mean Arthur? He lied about the pencil case when he kicked over the broth and the knife which had a silver haft. Would the likes of him give that away for a pitcher of broth? I know that story, Adam. Arthur was about nine, was he not? Aye, and he was lying even then. I don't think so. I think he gave those things in good faith. Good faith? Arthur Donithorn? Have you slept at all, Adam? Or eaten? Is it started yet? No. In the morning. And you'll be there? Of course. I'm to speak for her, for her character. In which he's ruined. Will you be there yourself, Adam? I should. Stand by her. Maybe I could go and see her now in prison. Let her know I haven't... Adam, you should know she's... What? She's refusing to speak. Since they brought her here, she's said nothing except... She's told the jailers to let no one in to see her. No one at all. Dinah, her cousin, Dinah Morris, she might see her. You met Dinah, did you not, Mr. Owen? Yes, I did. She's not like other women. I was very impressed by her. Now, you must eat. You seem to have lost half your weight in a matter of days. I'll go down and see what our landlord can provide. It can't have been, Mr. Irwin. What's that, Adam? It can't have been that she had a baby. How could she have, and none of us know? Not even her Aunt Rachel. How could that be? I saw her onto the coach myself. She'd on her one best gown, the pink and white one, and her bonnet and her red cloak. Then out the coach window she gave me a little kiss and that new smile of hers. Come to think on it, she kissed us all. Take some breakfast, Adam. Her Aunt Rachel and her Uncle Martin, and before that, Seth, even my mother. She kissed us all goodbye. I know. Now, please. Going for a visit with Dinah and smiling. Would she have done that with that smile if she'd been going off to have a baby and then, and, and then kill it? No. She was going off to find him, to be with him. Maybe we'll never know what was in her mind. But I have to go soon to the court. Is he here? No. But will he be here? Perhaps. What? There's something. Arthur is on his way home from Ireland, and I've left a letter for him at Donithorn Hall. He'll know the moment he arrives what's happened to Hetty. So he'll come here. What? Adam, Arthur's grandfather is dead. He was found dead in his bed two days ago. That's why Arthur's coming home. To be the squire of Donithorn Hall. He's the master now! In a way, that was the hardest moment of all, watching her uncle take the stand. Poor Martin. The judge had to instruct him to look at the prisoner. He wouldn't until then, but he did. He looked and confirmed that she was his niece, Hetty Sorrel, and told when he'd last seen her. How did she look? Very pale. Utterly still, even when they asked her to plead, guilty or not guilty, still she said nothing. Her counsel had to plead for her. Not guilty? Yes. Because it's his sin, not hers. And I should have killed him. Adam. I wanted to when I found them together. I still do. Still want to. For justice. Not justice, Adam. Passion. But if you were to obey it, you'd commit another wicked crime. Another? You think she did it? You do? The evidence is strong against her. What evidence? But we may still hope. We may hope for a pardon, a recommendation for mercy. What evidence? A man named John Olding spoke this morning. He's a labourer. He told us how he saw Hetty in a field two miles out of Stonnet and she was sitting under a haystack. He thought she was a beggar woman at first, but as he came closer, he saw her clothes were too fine. It was her one best gown, pink and white. Yes, and a red cloak. 
when she saw him, she got up and hurried away. No business of his, he thought, and carried on. He was going through some trees when something caught his eye under a nut bush. Something odd and round and whitish, those were his words. He bent down to pick it up. It was a baby's hand. Grass and wood chips had been gathered round it to cover it, hide it. But the hand seemed to reach out. So this man saw Hetty, and somewhere else he found a dead baby. He never saw them together. He doesn't know how the baby got there. He, he doesn't know the baby was hers. It, it couldn't be. She didn't have a baby. Adam, a doctor spoke this morning to. He could say how the baby died. No. But he examined Hetty. She has given birth. What was it? What was what? The baby. Was it a boy or a girl? I don't know. No one has said. I've called sorrow in my life. None of it, none of it would leave a bruise not next to this. Men are born to suffer, women too. We all know that. We're told it in church, in the Bible. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth. And her lying there like the corpse of herself, her hand reaching out to me, all odd and round and whitish. Adam? Adam! Are you in, dreaming? In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Yes. It's no wonder our religion has much sorrow in it. No wonder we need a suffering God. Has anyone sent for Dinah? I'm not sure. Martin Poyser said Rachel, too, had that idea, and that your brother Seth offered to bring her here, but she was perhaps in Leeds. Aye, she did go there. So we don't know how long it might take her to get here. Even if she is on her way, I fear it'll be too late. Too late? To persuade Hetty to speak in court. She'll still say nothing? Nothing. She denies everything with a shake of her head. Denies she even had a child when we know she did. She's a child herself. I told the court of her unblemished character all her years in my parish, told of the virtuous habits she was raised in. I doubt if it'll influence the verdict, but it may help in a plea for mercy. Mercy? Has anyone else spoken? Yes. Who? Are you sure you want to hear all this? Yes. Tell me. A widow who keeps her shop here in Stoniton, Sarah Strong. She sells tobacco, snuff, tea. Hetty appeared at her door looking for lodgings. Mrs. Strong at first said she didn't take in lodgers, but Hetty began to cry. Said she wanted a bed for one night only. She was on her way home, but she could go no further. On her way home? Yes. Said her family were farming people some miles away and she was on her way there. She was coming home. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, Mrs Strong thought she seemed a decent girl, that maybe she'd been led wrong and if she was trying to get home to her family, it would be as well to keep her out of further harm. So she said Hetty could stay the night. And during that night, the baby was born. Mrs Strong helped her through the birth. Did she say if it was a boy or a girl? No. And no one asked? No one asked. Next day, Mrs Strong said she'd write to Hetty's family for her if she'd give her the name and address, but Hetty said no, she'd write herself soon. And she seemed to have a strange look in her eye. Strange? How strange? Well, that's all the woman said. A strange look in her eye. And flushed. It might have been a fever coming on, she thought, so she went to fetch a friend of hers. Someone skilled in dealing with such a thing. When she got back, they were both gone. Both of them? Yes. The baby, too? 
Well, yes. But don't you see? See what, Adam? She must have cared for it, the baby. Else why would she take it with her? If she'd wanted rid of it, she could have just left it there. She could have gone herself. I suppose she could. And then the baby died. It just died on its own. Babies do. Then why won't she say that, Adam? Thorns and thistles. What? All she's been through. Bring him forth in sorrow. The secret she'd kept, kept to herself all those months. She was alone. She'd be frozen inside, dumb. She's a child herself. Made dumb with it all. If this is true, Adam, she has to say it. She has to break free from her dumbness. She has to speak. Dinah. Dinah isn't here. Will you go? Maybe I should. Yes. Come with me to the court. If she sees you... I... If she saw I was there... That I haven't... But first you have to eat. You've had nothing for days. Look. We have bread here. At least take a piece of bread. It's fresh now. Mm, good bread. And wine. Have a glass of wine. Good. I'll take some myself. Eat the bread, Adam. Good. Now, another sip. That's good. Hattie Sorrel, you have been found guilty of the most heinous crime of infanticide. No grounds for mercy having been presented to this court, which has been offered by you only obstinate silence. You will be taken from here to Stonerton Prison, and from there two days hence to the appointed place, there to be hanged by the neck till you are dead. Look at me, Hetty. Don't you know me? It's Dinah. I told you I'd come to you. Did you think Dinah wouldn't come? I said I'd come if you were ever in trouble. I told you if you ever need a friend, you have one in me. Do you remember? Well, we can just sit quiet for a while if you like. I could say a prayer. I remember. But you can't help me. Because now it's Saturday and... Is it? Yes. They're going to hang me on Monday. Can you save me from that? No, Hetty. I can't. Well, then. I know Mr Irwin's doing all he can to win a pardon, but we have to face the possibility that he might not succeed. You mean I have to face it? You're not alone, Hetty. You need never be alone. Are my family here? Uncle Martin was here. You know he spoke in court. And now he's gone home. And Aunt Rachel was never here at all. Adam is here. I know. Mr. Irwin told me. He hasn't been in this place. You would let no one visit you. He was in the court. I didn't see him. He was there at the end. I saw all the ladies. Ladies? Lots of fine ladies with bangles on their arms and feathers in their hair. But none of them had earrings like mine. Gold and pearl and garnet. And they were real. 
He gave them to me. Arthur. Do you want to talk about Arthur? He loved me. He still does, and I love him. That's all. That's not all. You bore him a child, and the child is dead. There was no child! Etty, listen to me. I told you you need never be alone. You're not alone. There's someone with you now. Someone besides me. He knows your every secret, your every thought. Maybe he does know. But you don't. You can't. I know this. You're shutting up your soul against God. Am I? Yes. And what pardon can you expect then after Monday? Is that why you're here? To frighten me with hell? To bring you to the truth. The only truth that can save you, save your soul. My soul? God's love can overcome all things. It can overcome all except willful sin. Sin that we cling to. Wickedness we won't give up. It wasn't wicked. What? There was no wickedness. Oh, Etty! Maybe I sinned when I told lies so I could be with him. Told lies to me aunt and uncle and to you. I'll confess, I sinned when I told the lies. But there was nothing wicked when I was with him. In the summer house. The hermitage is most secret den. On the ottoman there. Or on the floor, with a taste of brandy on my lips, and the taste of him. And that's what you can't know, what you can never know. That love, which is so, so far from wicked. You'll never all love like that in your arms. Feel him inside you like, like worship. Is that what you want to hear? And this worshipping man, he left you... He had no choice, but he still loved me. He told me so, and it's true. He told me if any trouble ever came to me... And that's where you were going, to find Arthur, when you knew you were expecting his child. There was no child! It's getting dark. Yes. Don't let us have a light in here. During the night. I know. It's contrary to rules, the turnkey said. He told me that too. So. Maybe you better go. Do you want me to go? I'll stay if you let me. How long? All night if you like. As long as you want me here. Sunday night too. Mr. Owen won't give in. Fighting for the pardon. I know he won't. He's a good man. So was Arthur. A good man. Even Adam said he was. Said it even after he'd seen us together. So don't expect me to say love in Arthur was wicked. Don't expect me not to remind you of God's saving grace. Adam saw you with Arthur. Saw us kissing. And then asked you to marry him. Yes. And you said you would. Not right away. But why? I still thought there might be another way. Maybe I could go away as a lady's maid. Something. Anything. No, I mean... Do you love Adam? <gasps> Did you love him when you said yes? No. How could I love Adam Bede when I loved Arthur and Arthur loved me? I'm sorry, Dinah, you don't understand these things. Then explain it to me. You loved Arthur, but you said you'd be Adam's wife. Why? Because Arthur couldn't marry me. And I knew he wouldn't be able to go on, so what then? The rest of my life on the old farm, milking and making butter, tending to the chickens. And I do like Adam. I've always liked Adam, I suppose. He's always just... been there. But now he had prospects. He was going to be a partner at Burgess and work on the estate too, some kind of manager. And then the Andy Craft worked with his brother. Was it Seth that fetched you here? Yes. Huh. Thought it might be. It was Aunt Rachel's idea. But then I was away in Leeds, which is why I wasn't with you before. <laughs> Aunt Rachel's idea? Yes. But she won't come herself. Hetty, our aunt's heart is broken. She can hardly leave her bed, and Uncle Martin must be with her. I never meant to break any hearts. I know you didn't. I just thought... What? Tell me, Hetty, tell it all. Not only to me, least of all to me. 
to your own heart and to God. My own heart. It's hard, Dinah. It's gone like a stone. That's why you can't understand. Your heart isn't gone cold and hard. Your heart can be melted. It can be opened to God. That I do know, Hetty. I've seen it before, often before. You can be entirely unafraid, I swear to you. It is true. It is real. You can be saved and at peace. I think that's what I wanted. To be at peace. I'd settle for that. Settle for Adam Bede. I'd forgive and forget as much as I could and be the wife of a carpenter. A master craftsman, a builder, a cabinet He said he might even build a town hall. And a strong and tender man. Yes. So why did you run away from him? And he told me once I knew little of the world. I know more than him now. Why did you go, Hetty? Because you knew you were going to have Arthur's child. I wasn't expecting his child! How could I be? He'd been gone for nearly seven months. Seven months. Well, no one had noticed. Not Adam, not even my aunt, wise old Aunt Rachel. She'd have had to be blind. Blind to me, at least. You would have done all you could to conceal it. And it's not something Aunt Rachel would be likely to suspect of you. Unthinkable to Adam. You're talking of things you don't understand again. Oh, Hetty. I'm a Methodist and I preach the word of God, but I'm not a cloistered nun. I work in a cotton mill. I go into the worst slums and hovels and prisons in the country. And hear lots of confessions. Yes. Ever made one yourself? Of course. We all sin. What could you have to confess? Weakness, lapses <laughs> of faith, moments of despair. Of oh, despair? Have you ever sat by that pool below the Scantlands? What pool? Off the Treddleston Road, out of Aislop, down to the Scantlands, the pool with the oak tree and the elder bushes. Have you ever sat there and looked into it when it's still full of winter rain? No. I have. And wondered what sort of bed it might make. Oh, Hetty. Will you make me a promise? What promise? Nothing dreadful. Nothing sinful, anything but. Oh, then of course. I'll tell you about the pool. And about going away. And then you make the promise. If you do, I'll tell you the rest. All of it. All right. Yes. Right. It was the middle of February. What's it now? The 13th of March. Then I'm to be behind on the 15th. That was to be my wedding day. Oh, Hetty, cousin. Don't. Listen. I was going to Treddleston to buy things for the wedding. Aunt Rachel had been scolding me for days to get them, so I set off in my red cloak and my bonnet, and I felt... homeless. Why couldn't they all not see I didn't belong there with them? It was like no-one could see me. Not even Adam and all his gazing with those clever eyes of his. He couldn't see me. When I got on the road between the eye edges, I could walk more slowly. I didn't have to worry about how my face looked or how high my shoulders were. And I walked slower and slower till I stopped. I didn't know why at first. I wasn't thinking at all. Then I, I saw a gap in the edge and I still didn't know why, but I went through it into the scantlands, rough pastures no one could do much with. I was right beside it before I remembered. I dreamed about this place. Just last night. The pool with the oak tree and elder bushes round it. The water was black and it... This is just where I stood in the dream. The very same grassy bank, looking down into it, thinking it was a bed. My bed. I'd lie down in my bed with no husband and no one would ever find me. I was just about to step in, stretch out, when I was awake. And I knew they would find me. And you had to go away. I'd thought that before, but I couldn't see how. It was Uncle Martin told me how to do it. <laughs> oh, there's a the thing. Uncle Martin given me the idea how to get away. He said, why don't you go to Snowfield, wench, and fetch Dinah home for the wedding? I said it was too far and I'd write to you. But now, now I'd go on to Treddleston and buy the wedding things I'd never used like I'd been told. And when I'd done that, 
Well, they were pleased I was going to see you, praying you'd come back with me, but I'd never be back. I was going to find Arthur. He wouldn't turn me away, he promised. I'd be with him somehow. I didn't care how. I'd be with Arthur. And now you have to make your promise. What is it? It must be nothing. No. It's for the good of your soul. Mine too. You say I have to confess to save mine. So what I want from you is a confession. What confession? It's not to be something methody like despair or loss of faith or pride. It's to be something real. Something you've told no one else. Whatever's closest to your heart. Now. What's on your mind right now? Uh -huh. I know you'd never break a promise, Dinah. And if you don't make it, I won't say another word. Promise. Yes. You'll confess. Yes.